This is the RS-25, the Ferrari of liquid rocket engines and the main engine from the Space Shuttle program. Economically repurposed for the Space Launch System, four of these engines will power the main stage of the rocket. The main solid rocket boosters of the shuttle program also have a renewed life in the SLS. With another two segments added, the boosters will thrust for over two minutes. This project has, has been a real fun effort in trying to take a, a heritage booster that had many, many years of reliability and great performance and evolve it into something uh, bigger and better. When we first undertook this design and qualification for the new booster, part of the mission was to make the, the booster uh, more affordable and, and more modern. And of course, it had to be completely redesigned for a new mission. It's a larger booster and the mission profile is, is sufficiently different to where pretty much everything on the inside of the booster is different. There's well over a thousand individual processes. Working with our customer, we were able to identify several hundred areas of improvement. We've got totally new avionics on, on this vehicle versus what we had on shuttle. It's state of the art. Bigger and more powerful than any previous launch system, the SLS has been under development for some time. Designing it is one thing, building it another. In new or refurbished factories and assembly shops, the body of the largest rocket ever to fly is being constructed one piece at a time. The massive hydrogen tank takes shape. The smaller oxygen tank soon follows. The interim stage for the manned flight is another hydrogen-oxygen motor supplied by cryotanks fabricated with new technologies. So to design and manufacture this tank, we use new materials. We process the tank by automated fiber placement. The benefit of that is we can lay down the material quickly, which provides us a low cost operation and a very lightweight tank. We've worked on this program for 29 months. And when we started, we'd never built a tank of this size uh, by the, the methods that we did. Uh, we did automated fiber placement and fluted core, uh, just developing the robotic fiber placement equipment and way to make the skirt in one piece was a large challenge. Each exacting piece is fabricated. Test articles are run through the mill. Vibration tests, vacuum tests, acoustic tests, stress tests. Nothing is left to chance. new technology and new materials for a new generation of space exploration. So this test, there were several things that we looked at. This was the first time we used those uh, thermal knives to start the deployment sequence, and that allowed uh, cut some tethers, but then allowed the solar array to deploy. Um, we wanted to test the locking mechanisms to ensure that it locked properly in, in space because uh, we, anything that could possibly go wrong, we wanted to see test down here so that we're, we can ensure a, you know, a successful flight.
So it's all about technology. If you don't uh, develop technologies for the future, you won't you won't go where you want to go. So so it, composites will decrease the weight of the tanks. It'll increase the payload performance of the launch vehicle. It'll give us uh, it basically enables things that we don't have today. Soon the mighty rocket will lift human beings up further than ever before.